Now we've been here 16 years. You could look under the dryer and see a nun from St. Bridget's, a prostitute sitting next to her, a transvestite with boobs sitting next to the prostitute. But I looked at everybody and I said, how amazing that the nun could be talking to the prostitute and the prosecute the prostitute is talking to the lady from Fisherman's Wharf, and everybody was getting along like one big family. It was the best setting you ever had. We would have the pimps drive up in front of the store in their Cadillacs and hunk the horn. Sometimes they were so busy they couldn't even come out, and we run in outside, and she pulls out this piece of hair from her bag, and she says, do you do these? And of course, we, we, we did wigs, but I didn't know what this thing was. Well, she explained to me that it was a pussy patch. They were having trouble with the Broadway scene because as the girls would start undressing, when they took their tops off, they'd get arrested. The next morning, they'd come and say, Rosalie, we got arrested, you know. And the next scene was to take the bottom clothes off. Well, when they tried it, they started to get arrested again. So somebody came up with a good idea to put a patch of hair there as long as they weren't using their own pubic hair. Then they got away with it. So this is what this piece of hair was that she brought into the shop. I brushed the hair a little bit, put some gloves on, of course, and brushed the hair a little bit, dipped it in a dry cleaning solution. And within one minute, this thing was cleaned. And I turned around and I said, now, are we in the hair business or are we not in the hair business? Is this not hair or am I mistaken? I said, I just made $10 in one minute's work. And so I want you to know that we are in the hair business. And so that was one great lesson that the girls got from the shop. If it's a tiny bit big, I could take these extra links out. That's easy. You just let me know. I think it's nice. I think it's, I think it's nice. Okay, my dear. We grew up with them pretty much, Rosalie's, uh, Rosalie's kids. We pretty much considered her as close as an aunt. Oh, she was always uh, up, you know, always uh, full of spirit, uh, always joking, um, you know, straightforward. They were just, you know, great uh, down-to-earth, genuine people. I'm sure she had some pretty interesting uh, clients, but again, I was at that age where, you know, to me, everybody was normal or the same or however you want to put it. My best customers now are young people, young girls between the ages of 20 and 35. And once they come in and they try a wig, they are hooked, okay? It becomes a habit. And so I even tell them after they buy their first wig, I said, you will be back because they get so many compliments. They're so easy to upkeep. They look good. They can go out and be somebody different. And you can actually put a wig on somebody that's not quite so pretty or so good looking. And all of a sudden they see themselves like that wig and they start, all of a sudden they're sexy or they start swishing a little bit and that, you know, they really take on the personality of the wig. Until the day we die, there's nothing that could stop us. If there's something you have to do or you want to do, all you have to do is pray on it, think about it, concentrate on it, and it'll happen. And so that's why I've been able to, to manage you know, restaurants, burrito factories, beauty salons, beauty schools. The main thing is to be happy and peaceful in your life, and I have found peace. What else can I say?